Good afternoon, family, friends, and the John Paul II graduating class of 2020. Welcome to our virtual graduation ceremony. My name is Olinda Rizzolo, and I'll be your host today. We would all agree that we would have preferred a more traditional graduation where we could all be together, and, but hopefully you have uh, celebrated as a family, and this celebration today is just another part of that celebration. The program for today is essentially two parts, which I will outline for you. First, there is a virtual celebration. You can view the system graduation mass, then hear greetings from Bishop Ronald Fabro, Bishop of the Diocese of London, and Mr. John Jevnikar, Chair of the London District Catholic School Board, and finally Mrs. Linda Stout, Director of Education for the School Board. Following that, we have prepared our own John Paul II graduation celebration. We have prepared a brief and beautiful liturgy to pay tribute to and bless our grads, individual teacher testimonials for the recipients of the John Paul II Spirituality Awards, a few words from your principal, Mr. Cassidy, and the highlight of our program, the Valedictorian's Address. After the address, I will provide instructions for you to come to the school for the curbside pickup of your diploma folders. Whereupon, you, uh, you make your way to the school to receive your diploma folder and perhaps pose for a family picture outside of the school. As is typical these days, we have a few rules that I will share with you later. We hope that you have the time to enjoy all the presentations. We are very proud of each and every one of you, and there are many who want to wish you congratulations. Now it is time to celebrate as a John Paul II community, and when we do celebrate, we always like to begin with prayer. I would ask our chaplain, Mrs. Yana Atkinson, and members of the staff to lead us in prayer for our John Paul II grads and present the recipients of the Spirituality Awards. Welcome to our graduation liturgy. Today we celebrate the success of our graduate students. Over the past four years, and especially last spring, you, the class of 2020, have faced many challenges and have learned and have worked to overcome them. Today we celebrate your achievements, and together with you, we present our hopes, plans for the future, and joys to the Lord. We thank God for all the blessings we have received and for the lessons we have learned along the way. We ask him to grant us the courage to continue our mission of being witnesses to our faith, especially during the time of pandemic. Let us start with the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Gracious God, you are the source of all hope, knowledge, and goodness. We ask you to surround all of our 2020 graduates with your grace. Bless them with hope so that they may move into the future with eager and open hearts. Help them, Lord, to put the knowledge, skills, and insights gained through their education at JP2 to use for the good of all. Inspire them, Lord, to believe in the goodness of life, even when they are faced with challenges and difficulties, even in the midst of a global pandemic. As they journey through their new chapter of life, may they continue to grow in faith, hope, and love. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, your beloved Son. Amen. The Father, the Son. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. 
If you keep your commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love one another as I have loved you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Loving God, we ask you to be with us as we continue our journey. Watch over us and protect us in whatever we do. We trust that in your love, you will hear our prayers. The response to the prayers is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of all nations, that they promote life, peace, and justice. May God give them the grace to work together during this pandemic, to show special care toward the poor and vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, within our families and our London community, that they find healing, safety, and comfort in Christ Jesus for an end to the global pandemic, and for all those who are suffering from COVID-19. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the graduates of JP2, class of 2020, that they always seek to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit to guide them throughout their lives. May they have the courage to share their gifts with those who need them. May they be free to shape a future of peace and justice for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for those who have helped our graduates achieve excellence, including their parents and families, school staff, parish teams, and community members, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died in our families and in our school community and are now in God's presence forever. Teach us to be comforters of one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join with me as we pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. As we end one journey and begin another, may we go forth into the world as people of faith, hope, and vision. Let us hold fast to that which is good and to be the light of hope for everyone we meet. Lord, help us to discover our purpose and to fulfill the wonderful plans you have for us. May we follow the example of John, St. John Paul II as we grow in faith, serve our community, support those less fortunate and vulnerable. May we treat each person with kindness, fairness, dignity, and respect. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will close this service now with the blessing of the graduates. As you go from here, May God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord give you grace, mercy, and peace. Do not let your faith or your witness grow cold. Remember, God's gift of faith is like a flame. When the embers of that flame have cooled, you must fan them again to keep them ablaze. Remember what you have been taught and what you have experienced. Live in such a way that all who know you may see the light of God reflected in you. And may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you and among you all the days of your life. Amen. Here, all members of the grade 12 graduating class are considered for JP2 Spirituality Awards. The 10 awards are based on our Catholic Christian faith and traditions. Catholic education is about educating the whole person, and so we strive to create a JP2 school community based on learning that is infused with faith 
encouragement, and love. The students who will receive these 10 awards today have been recognized by staff as people who demonstrate respect, integrity, leadership, commitment, determination, courage, compassion, generosity, faith, and stewardship. All staff were invited to nominate deserving students, and we had an amazing number of nominations this year. It was a challenging process for the committee to select just 10 recipients for this awards since there were so many deserving students. But in the end, we were able to select the 10 Grade 12 Spirituality Award winners. From Paul's letter to the Romans, do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. The Spirituality Award for Respect is given to the graduating student who extends respect to all members of our community, regardless of status, achievements, or contributions, and respects the faith traditions, world religions, and the life journey of all people of goodwill. The winner of the Spirituality Award for Respect is Connor McMullen. From the Gospel of Luke, but not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. The Spirituality Award for Leadership is given to the graduating student who sees the need for leadership and acts willingly without expectation of acknowledgement or reward and demonstrates and exercises Christian leadership in the achievement of individual and group goals. The winner of the Spirituality Award for Leadership is Jean-Pascal Rocundo. Integrity. From the Book of Proverbs, the integrity of the upright guides them. The Spirituality Award for Integrity is given to the graduating student who reflects a clear understanding of what God expects of us and acts accordingly. The winner of the Spirituality Award for Integrity is John Carlo Mara. Congratulations, John. From the book of Proverbs, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. The Spirituality Award for Commitment is given to the graduating student who renews her commitment to God each time she acknowledges our connectedness to God and to one another. This year's winner of the Spirituality Award for Commitment is Rachel Moe. Congratulations, Rachel and God bless you. From Paul's letter to the Romans, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The Spirituality Award for Determination is given to the graduating student who has endured challenges and responded with hope and trust in God's grace. The winner of the Spirituality Award for Determination is Angela Adra. From the Gospel of Matthew, I have said this to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. The Spirituality Award for Courage is given to the graduating student who remains faith-filled through adversity. The winner of the Spirituality Award for Courage is Kiana Albert. From Paul's letter to the Colossians, as God's chosen one, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. The Spirituality Award for Compassion is given to the graduating student who has lived by Jesus' example through word and action. The Spirituality Award for Compassion goes to Sina Rin. From Paul's letter to the Corinthians, they are to do good, 
to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. The Spirituality Award for Generosity is given to the graduating student who embraces others with a generous heart and thinks of others before him or herself. The winner of the Spirituality Award for Generosity is Sam Lamb. From the book of Proverbs. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced. And he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion. The Spirituality Award for Faith is given to the graduating student who faces life's challenges with hope and confidence that God's love will help him or her to prevail. The winner of the Spirituality Award for Faith is Jessica Fox. From the first epistle of Peter, like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. The Spirituality Award for Stewardship is given to the graduating student who strives to honor God's call to serve with meaning and dignity. She or he cultivates their gifts and shares them lovingly while working for justice. The winner of the Spirituality Award for Stewardship is Rhoda Fatamula. And now we have the Spirit Award. The Spirit Award recognizes the outstanding work and contributions of students across all schools across the London District Catholic School Board. It is given to the student who exemplifies the Ontario Catholic graduate expectation as a student here at John Paul II School. The winner of 2020 Spirit Award is Tyler Cadorno. I'd like to introduce our principal, Mr. Peter Cassidy, who will pay tribute to the class of 2020 and offer congratulations on behalf of the John Paul II community. Greetings to members of the graduating class of 2020 of John Paul II Catholic Secondary School, and to all those family and friends who may be viewing this online celebration. Thank you for taking the time to participate in our virtual grad ceremony, and I hope to see many of you later on for our curbside diploma presentation. One thing that I like to do in my address is to personalize it to that particular grad class. You know, call on some of the inside jokes or highlight some of the unique personalities that form membership in the grad class. This year would have been tough because we only saw you for about half of our grad year. But had I done it, it would have been something like, we were going to rename the grad tribute presentation to the Sam Lamb Show. Or, who taught Joey Franson to accessorize? He always looked too good to be in uniform, even when he was in uniform. Does anybody else find it funny that a girl named Berger was really good at foods class? Did Ethan Whitmore join a boy brand after graduation? We ran a DNA check on Connor McMullen to confirm his age. Nobody can be that cool in 17. Is it true that Zoe Manders talked to MVH into buying a pair of docks for off uniform days? Not the low ones that any can but wear, but the high black ones that Zoe wears. Doyle, if you've just tuned in, we're at the part where the principal tries to say funny things about people in the grad class, so you really haven't missed much. There is no truth to the rumor that Michael Onan was perfecting an energy drink in Miss Hamilton's class and bootlegging it to members of the senior basketball team. And finally, I bet if I check the second floor bathroom right now, Ben Tu will be sitting on the counter. You know, things like that. But that was the easy part. I mean no disrespect to anyone, but I would present those little quips as evidence that you had a lot of interesting characters in this class, and you will be missed, not just for the quirky personalities, but for the wonderful work you did as students of John Paul II. It is usually pretty easy for me to prepare for graduation. It is one of my favorite events in the year. I must confess, however, to having some difficulty this year. What do you say to this particular class at this time and in this limited circumstance? I prepared several drafts, each worse than the one before. In an act of desperation, I went back over some of my old speeches and I found a bit of inspiration in one of them. Bear with me. One of the events leading up to grad is the Jag Day Mass. 
Part of this JP2 tradition is to have a distinguished graduate speak to assembled grads after Mass. Last year, it was a personal pleasure for me to introduce Dr. Karenina Aguilar to the grad class as I remembered her from her time as a student. Brilliant, active in school life, and a tough, tough basketball player. Dr. Aguilar talked about her JP2 experience and specifically about being in classes while the 9-11 disaster was unfolding. That was a very dark day, to say the least, and she asked the 2019 grads this question. What will be your 9-11? That is, what major challenge or challenges will you face in your lives? For you, the class of 2020, an early answer came on March 13th when you stopped going to school in your graduating year and returned in late June to pick up your grad gowns and turn in your books. Given that we are now celebrating your graduation, you seem to have come overcome this early 9-11 pretty well. You made it to graduation, and it was no small feat. So for some of you, it may have been an act of sheer determination and grit. The isolation and anxiety of the, these past few months hit us all in different ways, and we know that some of us really struggled. It would have been very easy to become discouraged or to abandon learning for getting marks. You knew you could have stopped working after March break if you were happy with the mark, but most of you continued, realizing the value in the learning and not just a numerical result. Hopefully, you feel confident in your post-secondary life, safe in the knowledge that you did your best under a difficult circumstance and prepared yourself as well as you could have in the home stretch of high school. On your behalf, I'd like to thank your teachers as I know many of them worked hard alongside you to ensure your success. The last few months of grade 12 were filled with celebrations big and small, formal and informal, each contributing to a sense of excitement and culmination as well as closure to your secondary school experience. I'm sorry that you missed that because the experience is so much bigger than a list of events. While we don't need to dwell on those lost experiences, it should be noted that many of these events have an element of faith celebration woven into them. It's a last chance to confirm your commitment to what you believe in, your faith and values prior to leaving this Catholic faith community. Nurturing and selling, celebrating your faith may become much less convenient, but infinitely more important as you move on to face the challenges that come with life as you grow. In simple terms, your Catholic education has challenged you to recognize the wonderful godliness that exists within you. Each of you is a unique gift to the world, and you need to feel that deep within. Secondly, you need to see the godliness in others. That's a challenge made easier if you work on step one. Finally, to find the godliness in the world. Of all the planets I've lived on, this is my favorite, and I hope you feel that way too. Not from merely an environmental point of view, but as this amazing evolutionary miracle, or as Pope Francis called it, our common home. We hope and pray that you are able to continue that search in your lives after leaving John Paul II. So, class of 2020, it does sound great, doesn't it, JP? Little inside joke. Hope that your shortened high school experience does not hold you back. As the class of 2020, you are remembered for the legacy that you left during your time here, but also in the grace and strength you showed when you couldn't be with us. You have distinguished yourself in a time of trial, and this is a true sign of character. In speaking with your teachers, the ones who really know you best, we are pretty sure that you will be okay and then some. But just in case, and in recognition that you missed about three and a half months of your secondary school education, I am offering you the first ever JP2 COVID rain check. It's like when Mr. Rizzolo and Mr. O'Henley go golfing and it rains partway through the round, they get a rain check to come back. At any time, if you feel like it, and if you think it will help, you can pop back into JP2 and pay a visit, God willing, or just contact us if that's easier and safer. It may be to proof a big essay, ask for some post-secondary planning guidance, say thank you to the guidance department for helping you with your OSAP stuff and your PIN number, literally talk shop with Mr. Benito or Mr. Vieira, or simply to cry on a shoulder. It's all free. In turn, we get to see you again and marvel at your newly acquired maturity, independence, and your hipster wardrobe. The teachers and staff members who have come to know and enjoy you did not get a chance to say their goodbyes in the way that they would like, and they're feeling a little sense of loss as well. On behalf of the community of John Paul II Catholic Secondary, I wish to offer my final formal congratulations to the class of 2020, a most unforgettable group of young people. 
Be proud of where you came from in your post-secondary life, proud of the fact that you are a distinguished graduate of JP2, and proud of the fact that you are part of this one-of-a-kind grad class. Try to remember all the lessons we taught you while you were here, and hopefully that will help you in your journey going forward, wherever it takes you. Let us know how you're doing, and rest assured that we will be thinking of and praying for you. Please do the same for us. God bless you and all who you love. Thank you. Now for the highlight of our celebration, the presentation of the valedictory address. Before we hear from John Paul Rucundo, or should I say PJ, as his friends refer to him, I asked some of his friends for some insight into JP, and this is what they had to say. He is a humble, genuine, and mature friend, and one who has great talent for visual arts. He is very committed to his faith and has a strong faith-filled spirit that we all see. JP is said to be a quiet person until you get to know him, but don't tell him any secrets. He is terrible at keeping secrets. He can't help himself. I was also told that JP tells stories of his childhood in Africa. One story he has told is about his contracting malaria multiple times. And for some reason, his friends, and I say friends lightly, think it's a great story. I'm not so sure. JP is an amazing young man, an individual with a heart as bright as a smile. Graduates, your malaria-free valedictorian for your class of 2020, PJ Rukundo. Hello everyone. My name is Jean Pascal Rukundo, and I was voted to represent this class in our final moments as high school students. On behalf of the John Paul II graduating class of 2020, I'd like to thank each and every person that made this possible. To the teachers, administrators, supervisors, and all staff, thank you for your consistent care and oversight into our success, for going above and beyond the contract and pushing, motivating, and understanding us in our worst moments. For those unseen hours, for all the work that goes above the curriculum that goes unnoticed, all for our benefit, we thank you. And we are truly forever grateful. To each and every member of our families, we thank you. Although we go days, weeks, and even years overlooking your support, we truly appreciate each and everything you do, especially to our parents and our guardians for inspiring and most importantly, loving us. And for that, we love you too. The class of 2020, it just flows so well. But how is the best sounding year filled with so much adversity? But despite the year, we made it, and we are now fully accountable for our lives. We are out of high school, and like Mr. Cassidy, we are moving up in that one movie. There is truly no way to explain how quickly the past four years of our lives went. From dependent to independent, 14 to 18, children to adults. This is the generation that will flip the world upside down. 2020 turned out to be nothing like we expected. We lost so many inspiring icons, including Kobe Bryant, Chadwick Boseman, Gerard Higgins, Stevie Lee, and many inspiring figures. The world was turned upside down with this pandemic, and we were met with uncomfortable conversations about equality and race. The citizens of Yemen, the Muslims in China, the people in Sudan, and more humans continue to suffer in ways unimaginable to the West. We've been left with a mess, and it's our responsibility to clean it up. No matter how unfair it may seem, this is our lives now. The past four years, the world was defined and redefined over and over again. We witnessed many crazy events and now hold many stories for our future generations. While trying to come up with a final message to share with my class, I honestly didn't know what to say. What do you say to a group of diverse teenagers, each with the potential to change the world? What do you say to young men and women who are forced to mature faster than their peers? And what do you tell a group of people who claim to know everything? I went around asking many, many adults of mixed ages, what would you tell yourself if you were 18 again? And each reply was simply summed up in this, chase your dreams, but be ready for life's unaccepted, unacceptable and unseen circumstances. Don't settle for anything less, fight for what you believe in and be cautious. So with that, go chase your dreams, but be cautious. 
Life is sometimes, for lack of better words, a waste man at times. And it's unfair. Tupac said, no matter how hard it gets, stick your chest out, keep your head up, and handle it. This is a new era, a new way of life. So don't listen to the people who still live in yesterday. Don't conform to any human's view on your life. Go crazy and go stupid and make your mistakes. Live life and try new things. And when you fail, get up and learn from it. However, and most importantly, keep an open mind. Ignorance is a sickness I pray none of us have to encounter in our lives. Learning does not end now just because we are out of high school. Remember, everyone has a story within them that we can only read when we make contact. So respect those who differ from you. Wake up early and set your days up for success. Simply eat clean and drink your water. Take care of yourself first. Never be late. Something my teachers know I'm still trying to work on. To the teachers and staff and educational leaders, every day you are given the opportunity to change a child's life. Seven hours spent at school is 17 hours spent elsewhere. So may we all be blessed with the wisdom to know when authority and compassion are needed. Teach beyond the curriculum, advise more than ask, and reach beyond the contract. Special shout out to each and every teacher that took the time to become our mentors, our support systems, and our friends. To our families, forgive us. Forgive us for when we are too caught up to show our gratitude. Forgive us when we're too stressed to spend time with you. Forgive us when we allow the world to tear us down. Whether blood or not, family is the most essential relationship in our lives. To the class, over everything else in life, be grateful. Be grateful that we live in the most educated country in the world. Be grateful that we have food and clean water and that we have freedom. Be grateful that we have security to express ourselves and be grateful that we have the option to be ungrateful. For everything else in life, as we move forward, may we be remembered by these past, lot, by these past four years of high school. High school is now over, and whatever the next chapters of our lives look like, I pray for success over each and every one of us. So whatever we may be, whether CEOs or bosses, workers, teachers, engineers, chefs, artists, doctors, advisors, enforcers, musicians. We are Jaguars forever. Thank you. Thank you, JP, for your address. That reflects all the humility your friends described and shows your storytelling. Finally, the instructions to those of you who would like to come to JP2 and receive your diplomas from Mr. Cassidy and Mr. Droog in a drive-by diploma presentation. First, bring your caps and gowns if you feel so inclined. To make sure that everyone is safe, please conduct a family self-test prior to leaving your home. We would ask that everyone enter the John Paul II campus from the Oxford Street entrance, and please be careful. Follow the directions of the staff who are providing you with directions. Please come to the school as a family bubble. Don't come as a bunch of grads all stuffed into one vehicle. That promotes community spread. When you get to the school, please be patient. We would like to provide an opportunity for those who wish to take a few pictures. If you're taking photos, please be as quick as you can. Mr. Drug and Mr. Cassidy will meet you at the car and present you with your diploma. Remember that despite all this excitement, you must make sure to stick to social distancing. As much as you have, uh, may want to uh, hug Mr. Cassidy, you can't do that. When you get your diploma, please leave through the Highbury access, and don't try to make a three fancy three-point turn. If you do not want to come to the school today, you can pick up your diploma package any time after today by calling the school and letting us know when you're coming. We will do our best to accommodate. On behalf of the entire JP2 community, I would like to extend one final congratulations. I wish all of you well in your, your post-secondary lives, and health and safety to you and all your loved ones. Thank you and have a great day.
Thank you.